All right, folks, so today we're back on the Xbox Series S, and today we're going to be taking a look at setting up Sega Genesis, Sega CD, and 32X emulation in RetroArch. Now, in order to do this, you will need to have your Xbox set up in developer mode, and if you've not already done that, you can check out this video here, which will walk you through all of the steps to get that set up. And you'll also need to have RetroArch installed, and again, you can check out this video here, which will walk you through all of the steps to get that installed and set up too. Once you're done with that, there's just a couple of things we need to do on the computer. So we'll head over to the PC and get started. So if you are looking to play Sega CD games, we are going to have to add some BIOS files to your RetroArch installation. So to do that, we're going to head to our Xbox file share, click on the Windows Apps folder, click on our RetroArch installation, click on the System folder, and right in the System folder is where we're going to drag and drop our BIOS files. And you can see those on the left of my desktop there. So we'll just drag those into the root of the system folder. Nice and easy. Next, we're just going to add some games. Now I'm going to be playing my games from a USB flash drive. However, if you do want to add your games to the internal SSD on your Xbox, you can do that by pressing the up button to take you back into your RetroArch installation folder. Click on the games folder. And in the games folder, you can add separate folders for each of the system's games, just like we're going to do in just a couple of seconds on my flash drive. So if you are planning to run your games from a flash drive, what you need to do is open up the flash drive. Then in here, I already have a subfolder named games. And if you want to create one of those yourself, you can. But I'm going to go into the games folder. And then I'm going to create a couple of new folders, one for each of the systems. So to do that, we just need to right click, click new, click folder, and then just name them for each of the different systems. So I'm going to create a Genesis 32X and Sega CD folder. And you can also create new folders by clicking the new folder button at the top of the window. Once you've got all your folders created, all we need to do is copy the relevant games over to each of the folders. And if you are using some Sega CD games, you'll notice that each one's in its own individual folder. That's because those files typically come in bin and queue format, which is a multi-file format. Once all the games are done copying over to the new folders, we're actually done on the computer. So we can head over to the Xbox and start setting everything up. All right, so here we are on the RetroArch main menu, and in here we're going to create a couple of new playlists. So to do that, we scroll left and down to import content, then we scroll down to manual scan, then we press A on content directory, and then on content directory, if you saved your games on the internal SSD, you want to scroll down and select the S drive, and then select the program files folder, the Windows apps folder, your RetroArch installation folder, and then the games folder. And then within this directory is where you should see any folders that you created to save your games. But since my games are on a flash drive, I'm actually going to select E and press A, and scroll down to the games folder and press A again. And there you can see we've got the three new folders that I just created. So first I'm going to add Genesis. So I'm going to scroll down. Press the A button on the Genesis folder and then scroll down and press A on scan directory. Next, back in the manual scan menu, we're going to press A on system name. Then we're going to scroll up until we see Sega Mega Drive Genesis and press A. Then we're going to scroll down to default core and press A. And then we're going to scroll up until we find the Mega Drive Genesis cores. And I'm going to be using the Pico Drive core for my Genesis games. So I'm just going to select that. And then we're just going to scroll down to the bottom of the screen and press A on Start Scan. Once the scan's complete, you'll see a pop-up at the bottom letting you know that it's all done. Then we're going to press B to go back to the Import Content menu. And you'll see on the left sidebar menu that we now have a playlist named Mega Drive Genesis. Next, we're going to add 32X games. And the process is exactly the same for 32X. So all we need to do is press A on Manual Scan. Press A on Content Directory, select the 32X directory, and press A. Press A on Scan This Directory, then scroll down to System Name and change this to Sega 32X. We're going to be using the same Pico Drive core for 32X games, so all we need to do is scroll down to the bottom again and press A on Start Scan. Again, you'll see a notification when the scan's complete. We'll press B to go back to the import content menu, and you'll see there that we now have a 32x playlist. And then finally, we're going to add Sega CD games. So again, the same process, we just need to press A on manual scan, press A on content directory, select the Sega CD directory, and press A. Press A on scan this directory, then scroll down to system name and change this to Sega CD. 
Now, if you are playing your Sega CD games from your internal SSD, you will be able to use the Pico Drive core without any issues. However, if like me, you're playing your games from a flash drive, you will need to change the core which is being used for Sega CD games. So in this case, I'm going to use the Genesis Plus GX core. Once you've selected the core that you're going to be using, scroll down to File Extensions and press A. And if you are using bin and Q file based games, which is pretty much the norm for Sega CD titles, you just want to type in Q C U E as the file extension to search for and what this will do it'll avoid pulling in all of the individual bin files into your playlist once you've done that just scroll down to start scan and press a once again to start the scan once the scan's complete just press the b button to go back to the import content menu and then we can scroll to the left sidebar menu and you'll see there we have a playlist for 32x genesis and sega cd now, depending on where you got your games from, you may have these extended file names. And we can actually tidy that up a little bit just by changing a couple of settings here. So to fix that, we're going to scroll up to settings, then scroll right and down until we see the playlists. Then we're going to press A on manage playlists. And then we're going to select one of the playlists. Let's take a look at the 32X here. Press A. And then we're going to scroll down to label display mode and press A once again. And here you can see you've got multiple options. But I'm just going to select remove parentheses and brackets and that should clean up our game titles. So we'll repeat the process a couple of times on the Genesis and Sega CD playlists. And then we can go check that those changes have been made by pressing the B button to go back and just scroll through our playlists. So finally, before we get started playing some games, let's take a look at some of the settings within the Pico Drive core. So we're just going to start up Robocop versus Terminator here. Excellent. And then we're going to access our quick menu. Then we just need to scroll down to options and press A. And you can see here there's a couple of different options we can change. First one is input device. Obviously, you can select here from a three button or a six button controller. I'm just going to leave both mine set to six button pads. Next, we've got no sprite limit. This one's a bit of a personal preference. I'm going to leave it turned off for now. Next is Mega CD RAM cart. Now, like I said, I'm going to be using the Genesis Plus GX core for my Sega CD games. So this one doesn't really matter to me, but I'm going to leave this one turned on. If you are using the Pico Drive core to play your Sega CD games, obviously you can choose to turn this one on or off. We're going to leave the region set to auto. The core provided aspect ratio as par. Show over scan, I'm going to leave turned off. I'm going to leave 68K overclock off as well. Dynamic recompilers, I'm going to leave turned on. Audio filter I'm going to leave turned off, but this one can improve the audio quality for some games. Low pass filter percent I'm going to leave at 60%, but you can modify this one as you wish. Frame skip I'm going to leave turned off. Frame skip threshold percentage I'm going to leave that at 33%, which is the default. Renderer I'm going to leave as accurate. And the sound quality I'm going to leave at 44100. So now we've gone through all of our settings, we'll just press the B button to go back to the quick menu. And then we're going to scroll down to shaders and press A. And this one's personal preference, but if you do like to add shaders to make the emulator look as if it's running on an old CRT, this is where you would do it. So all you'd need to do is scroll down to shaders underscore slang, then scroll down to the CRT folder, press A. And then within here, there's a number of CRT shaders that you can apply. Each one looks slightly different, so just play around with these until you find one that you like. And to apply the shader, all you would need to do is press the A button. Once you're done with the shaders, just press the B button to go back to the quick menu. B once again to get back to the home menu. And then we're just going to do a quick reset by scrolling up to main menu. Scroll right and down to quit RetroArch. And then when we get back to the main developer home screen, we're just going to boot RetroArch back up. So once you're back in RetroArch, you're actually ready to play your games. So all you need to do is scroll to the left sidebar menu, select the playlist for the system that you want to play, and then just scroll right and press A on the game itself. And then A once again to run. And there we go. So that's a quick setup guide on how to play Genesis, Sega CD, and 32X games on RetroArch on the Xbox Series S and X. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please drop us a like and also consider subscribing. It's really helping the channel grow. And also, don't forget to check us out on Twitter. Thanks for watching.